All right, what's up everyone? Dr. Stalshorn here for the best mastermind of the entire series with my number one mentor in the world, Elliot Hulse. I am so sad, actually, because I left Strength Camp a few weeks ago, went back to Texas, and now we are back in Miami, all of us together, being out, partying, having food together, just, just like it used to be. And as I'm there in that energy, as I'm there in the high vibration of all of these people, I realized that, you know, what I left, I realized what I missed. And even in the talk that I did at Summit, I discussed a lot about this. The fact that we seek out mentors, some bad, some good, but when we get that right mentor, it's the best thing that can happen to us because you start, you step on the shoulders of giants. Right? Everything I'm doing right now, you know, I, I said Dr. Stoshron is a product of Elliot Hulse and RSD Tyler. Right? Sincerely, sincerely believe that. And for this mastermind, I want to provide the energy to our viewers. These are the guys who are very serious about becoming more masculine. They're very serious about enhancing their masculinity. They're serious about increasing their testosterone. They're serious about getting their health in order like I did by coming to Strength Camp, right? Like just yesterday, you were, Elliot was telling me, you know, when I came to Strength Camp, I had this, uh, this, kind of, this kind of posture when I would, you know, I would walk in, this kind of like shitty posture, like a feminine type posture. Well, I would call it feminine so much as it is a passive giving away of your part of your body, the, the leading forward. Yeah, and a, and a lot of, a lot of the guys that are watching this, they worry about posture, right? They worry about having poor posture, and a lot of that has to do with breathing, with bioenergetics. Right before I did the talk, I did the, the bow, right? right, Just so I can get ready for the, for the talk. Mm -hmm. So I want you to tell our guys here, these are the guys who bought the, the, the best package available, mm -hmm. uh, the bulging package, and tell them what it is for you to be a man, and masculine and have that alpha energy to give to the world. The first question that I want to ask King House is what is it for, how do you define being a man, being masculine, having the energy of an alpha that takes care of the tribe, that takes care of his family? How do you define that? Well, you just said it, you alluded to it and there are two different ways we can approach this one of the mind and the spiritual aspect that which you aspire to right and then that is and then the other end of the spectrum is that which you actually present to the world right here right now which is your body you know and how you're playing out the character of that which you aspire to be as far as aspiration is concerned the the, the greatest aspiration or the deepest desire for most men is to achieve what i call kingship and as a king you live your life to do two things. It's very, and they're very masculine, that's why I, uh, I share it with you in this particular way. And that is to provide and to protect, or to create, uh, or to offer creativity and order. Creativity and order, or providing and protecting. You see, so uh, providing and order is a matter of like, as a business owner, as a father, as a student in school, you have to order your life according to that which you're aspiring to, right? Yeah. So as a king in your life, and as uh, someone who is acting out the, the, the true masculine in its, in its fullness, you are going to live an orderly life. You have respect for boundaries. You have respect for, you, know, you see what I'm saying? Where yeah. I'm going with this? Yeah. Um, where if there's no order in your life, well then you're not fostering, uh, you can't be a provider. Ah, there, be, because huh. discipline and action and rigor is very physical. And if yeah. you're gonna provide in this world, you have to get down on the physical level. Meaning be disciplined about your school, be disciplined about your work, be disciplined about your commitments to your relationships. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And that's what a provider is is someone who could take something from the from the wishing realm, from the dream realm, and bring it down to earth, 
right? To provide, to manifest, to realize, to take something and make it real. And it requires that you have an attitude of orderliness in your life. You know, the disciplines associated with that. And, you know, we can talk about other aspects of our characters, but to, to hammer your question home with regard to what is very masculine, it is an order, it is a provider, it is a manifester, and that's how you want to live your life. And you do that from even the most basic activities like the discipline to brush your teeth in the morning, or to shower your body, or to keep yourself uh, well-dressed and groomed. Right? Right. That's, that's carrying yourself in an orderly way. Now, of course, there's neurosis. You can be neurotic, but you're not neurotic about many things. Right. But you don't even carry yourself like an orderly person. So there's that. And then there's that. To, and then there's to protect. This is the other high aspect of that which we want to achieve um, as kings, because that's what we all aspire to be. And, um, and to protect also is necessary to foster creativity, right? Because to be orderly in your life means to be creative in your life. But to foster creativity is to be generative. It means to help other people become realizers in their lives, to be manifestors in their lives. And that is to protect the dreams, protect the dreams of the future, protect the dreams of your children and your grandchildren, Protect the dreams of humanity by caring for the planet, by protecting our home. You see, as a protector, you're also still a creator. It's, it, of course, you know, these things, are, they all work together. You need both. You need to be a protector and a provider, as we described before. So I, I, I can go very far. Let me stop there with regard to <laughs> what you actually aspire to be when you're looking to manifest masculinity. Right? Got it. And there are many different aspects of that, but that's the pinnacle. Okay. It's, so that's up top. If you want to, if you want to proceed with what, how we carry ourselves, we can go there. But I want to see if you have any questions. Yeah, absolutely. So in in RSD, uh, a lot of the students they have this concept of lover versus provider. A lot of the RSD teachings are you should be a lover to a girl, and they, it's almost like a dichotomy. Like you cannot be both. You have to be a lover or a provider because. If you go into the provider mindset, then you can't sleep with the girl right away because she's gonna put you in the boyfriend mode or the husband mode or the long-term relationship You're trying mode. to provide too quickly without romancing, being a poet, being a, a Dionysus. Right. Right. And what I what I realize being with you at Strength Camp and just us talking and living, you're both. Right? And there are very few people that are both, and I didn't realize that there is such a thing as not lover versus provider, but lover and provider. So for these guys listening who have this mind of, of very extremes that, oh, there's a girl in front of me, I want to be a lover so I can get in her pants as soon as possible. And if I start providing, then she might see me as a friend or get into that friend zone thing. So what, what advice would you give them, guys that are especially just starting off, they're trying to become more manly, they're trying to get into that, you know, breathe into their balls and, and become more masculine, become more fit. What advice would, they, would you give them in this concept of lover versus provider and how they should see it? Well, bringing awareness to it like you just did is the first step. So this might be the first time you've been hearing this. Okay. So you may have just opened up a can of worms that you don't have to choose one or the other, right? Awareness is transformative in and of itself. So amen to that. But beyond that, we then have to choose how we live that out, right? So good, you could be what I call tender aggressive. That's Elliot Hulse training, coaching. I say tender aggressive as opposed to provider and lover, but you know, we're all saying the same thing. And it is your responsibility to be tender aggressive. Tender aggressiveness is the foundation of, of life. Because even down to, well, I, I like to go from the religious poetic perspective, metaphors, pictures. I love the yang symbol of how within the yang, the aggressive, there's an element of yin. It has to be there. It can't be all one way. And in the element of yin, has to have that masculine. Uh, Paul Jung says that every male and female has 
and had him up and had him up. Aspect. But um, the lover provider, in terms of if a, a person who's listening, one of our guys, he's, he has the mindset of either I'm a lover or I'm a provider. When I meet a girl for the first time, I have to be a gangster. I have to be in that mode of being well, a thug. Well, here's the thing. What's really important is your ability to be present with the moment. To be present with your energy, that's, that's absolutely paramount. Because you will make the right decision about who you need to be in that moment. You see, because if all you have is a hammer, then everything looks like a nail. And every girl you're trying to nail with a hammer. But you know what? Maybe she needs, uh oh. Maybe she needs a different style of approach. Maybe she is a hoe. Right? That was a good one. <laughs> right? So maybe aggressive is right for the uh, exchange of energy that's being pre pre that's present, that you're feeling with the person. But, um, but maybe that's the wrong way with this particular girl at this particular time. Maybe you need to be a little bit more tender. You know? So, see, the, what I'm very grateful for RSD for are the teachings. Because man, boys need teaching. But what also needs to be recognized, and, and I, you need both. What needs to be recognized is that you've got to let go of the teachings and learn how to be. And it is in your, it's in your existence that the answer is found. But to get the teachings is very important because now you know the, uh, the, the steps and the principles of the teachings. So uh, in, in mastery, uh, Robert Green quotes, uh, I think Miles Davis and uh, Charlie Parker. Okay. And he says to become a great musician, first you learn the notes and you learn the music and then you forget all that shit and just play. You have to learn got the steps, it, learn the notes, learn the music, but then forget all that shit and just play. You see, so that's the same way with, with teachings. You know, you, you take them in so that you have a framework to approach life but you also have to be present enough to choose what is appropriate right now rather than be reactive. Got it. Responsive. Got it. Got it. This is really interesting because it touches on my next topic, which is a lot of the guys, they pick up girls at clubs, right? So there, sometimes you're in a club and you have this thing called a state crash where you feel like shit, like you, you just got blown out like 30 straight times and you feel like you're, you're just the worst person in the world. Do you have any, I mean, you know, do you have any quick techniques that someone can do to become into their body? right then and there in the club with loud, crazy music. Mm. I mean, we've done this stuff ourselves, I mean, you know, at clubs, so like we know, you know. But I want you to tell these guys that they, when they get in that state crash, we're like, man, I am a fucking sleaze, sleaze bag here. Mm -hmm. Everyone in the world hates me and, and they're about to leave. Mm -hmm. You know, they're about to go home and cry and just jerk off and done. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's so, a choice. And you know what? We, we constantly have to make that choice about how we're gonna feel. And it's funny because this is part two of where I began. We've been up in the clouds just now talking about protecting, providing, warrior, uh, lover. These are all concepts, right? Here's the beautiful thing now. We can embody those concepts. This is brilliant and this is where it all gets tied together. Where you go from it's in the clouds and you're thinking about it and you're calculating to I'm living it, I'm being the thing right now. And as far as technique is concerned, no technique tops being present with your breath. Nothing beats being present with the feeling in your pelvis and your feet. Alexander Lowen says we have three sets of balls that we should always be looking for. Of course, we've got our eye the balls. We've got our, the balls of our feet. We should, be, uh, we should have sensitivity to our feet. And our balls, balls. Our instinct, our intuition, if you will. So, when you're proceeding from that particular place, you carry yourself with that. You carry yourself not with, not with just a, a heady mindset where your eyes are shifting all over the place, thinking about what you're to do next. You're also grounded in your pelvis. You're also grounded in your sexuality. You're breathing, you feel your balls. And when I say you feel your balls, of course that sounds very funny and you think of 
you know, your, your balls, whatever comes to your mind because we're all, we're all so immature about these things. But when I breathe, I can feel my pelvic floor drop. And I don't know if that's available for most people, but whenever I assess someone, their breathing is very shallow. You and I had a good time last night sharing that with some friends. Yeah. Right. So, that alone should alert you to the fact that you're not being present with your body. Because you're not present with your breath. You, don't, you have no breath control whatsoever. And one way to really drive your energy really into the, back into the ground, into your grounding, into yeah. where you stand, yeah. is to feel your feet. Dougie suggested we take off our shoes when we came to the beach here. Everyone's got on sneakers because you know it's, they're having a good time dancing and whatnot. And that immediately she took them off because it's like, ah, a good way to, to be grounded, a good way to be in touch with my feet and with the earth. So when we can be present with our body, now we're being present with that inner intelligence that tells us when we need to be tender, when we need to be aggressive. Right? And we also become less reactive and more responsive because there's a level of objectivity that comes to our thoughts when you're present in your body. Your thoughts can't carry you away so quickly when you can feel your body. And also, your body carries a lot of tensions. A lot of tensions also. A lot of emotional tension is trapped in our body. You know, I was thinking earlier about uh, an angry person and how in Chinese medicine they equate the liver with the emotion anger. Issues with the liver, um, it could be because of unresolved anger, uh, just anger that happens to be in the liver for whatever reason. So, uh, our, our bodies also carry our emotions. With that being said, uh, our muscular system carries our emotions, right? We know that when we're, we're, we're uh, for example, last night when we were at the club, there was a young lady who was with a bunch of other young ladies. They're all very pretty, and so uh, we were enjoying ourselves, talking to them, dancing and stuff. One had her button, her shirt buttoned all the way up. Yeah, I started the region. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. but not only that, she had her shoulders hiked up the whole time. She's dancing and trying to have a good time with her friends. Her friends are pretty relaxed. Her shoulders was up near her ears the whole time with her button up. And uh, well, I decided to have a good time and tease her about it. But you can see how her body. Her, the way she chooses to order herself, she orders herself up to the neck and carries herself in a very defensive, um, unlet down way. You see, so not only was she carrying herself that way, and we always judge by physical posture. You see her, she's not very attractive because she's not holding herself attractive. She's right. done herself this way, right, right. you know. Um, she, she is not only not just holding herself unattractively, but she's defensive, she's hiding herself, she's, she's up in a fighting stance with the shoulders up that way. That's a lot of fear, right? In, in, in the animal kingdom, that's where fear is held. If you notice when a dog gets angry, its back gets up. If you notice when a, a cobra is going to expand itself in order to uh, scare away prey, it opens up here. This area is associated with protecting ourselves. You see, so all throughout our body we experience um, light and shadows, expressions of who we're being, right? Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's really amazing because that girl was actually the leader of the group. Because later on when we tried to pull them, every girl I talked to, she's like, ask her, ask her. And so for the guys that are listening, a very practical, amazing secret that you just gave that RSD's never given <laughs> is when you go in a group, you look for the girl that is just looks the most defensive in terms of her body language. Yeah. That's the girl yeah. that's the leader of the group. Yeah. That's who you gotta convince if you wanna get yeah. your girl. Yeah. Or it might be that usually. Well, I, I picked yeah. her out right away yeah. because I saw, I awesome. recognized the character. Awesome. We are all playing characters whether we know it or not. Now I know through RSD you're taught to, to, to create your character, yes. which is brilliant. Because if you don't create it, somebody else is. We all have a character, right? But be that much more objective about it to say that like, even my body is saying something about me. And that is from the way you, yeah, it, 
from your, the head to the toes. Your body is speaking to the world. So we want to be present in our bodies so that we know that, so that our bodies are speaking the right thing to the world. One thing that you just touched on, which is another amazing topic, is this concept of honest signals, right? So you have a peacock, right? A peacock is gonna just let her feathers out to, to attract a mate, even though that is gonna make the peacock very vulnerable to predators. Mm -hmm. So that right wow. there is an honest signal because the peacock can't hide the signal. It's honest, right? That is brilliant, yeah. So you just said, you just talked about an honest signal in the, in the leader of the group. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And, and we all have our own honest signals. And do you know what? I love the fact that you used the peacock example because we all have an inner peacock. We are all meant to shine in our way. And we live in a world where shining isn't such a good idea because you invite, we were talking with our friend yesterday about that. When you shine, you invite the shots. When you shine too brightly, there's going, there has to be, it's just it's a part of the equation. There's somebody there that's gonna shoot you down. So you have to be, you have to be present with that. And if I'm gonna shine, if I'm gonna be my best, then, you know, I, I am gonna carry myself the best way I should be presented. And in all of the glory that I am as a human being. And whatever that means for you, without being ashamed of it. But also, be available for the pain that comes for the descent. With every sunshine, there is a nighttime. And we have to be present with the, the cycles of our lives, our, our emotions, our experiences. And if we live fast, we're gonna have a lot of more ups and downs. Yeah, because you're, you're the perfect person to ask about People hating on you, right? Because what's, what happens is when you reach this pinnacle of success, there's a lot of people who love you, but then there's a lot of people who hate you too. There's a lot of people that do very negative comments, they say bad things just because they themselves are that way, right? So now our guys here, these are elite guys who are like serious about their, their life. They're going out into the world and they get a lot of hate sometimes. Girls blow them out, right? They talk to girls and the girl's like, get the fuck out of my face. I don't want to talk to you anymore, you're ugly. Right, this is happening and a lot of them cry. I mean, we saw this at Vegas Immersion all the time. So how do they deal with that, man? Because they don't have these experiences. They're like in their early 20s or even late teens or even mid teens. What advice could you give them so they, they don't always get this? Uh, that, like they take life so seriously and what others that because you don't give a fuck about anything, what anyone says man you're good you you know who you are in the world you're congruent you do what you want you're you you are where you want you feel what you want but then there's all these people who try to get in your head and there's people who are guys at the club or even like in normal life they're bosses their parents right and this same thing happened to me that's why i can relate to everyone what what would you tell them that they can do in their own lives in terms of rituals, in terms of maybe books they should read or how they should just live their life internally to overcome these, this hate. Well, the truth is I already answered that question. When we wrapped up, uh, we wrapped up our the earlier part of the conversation, I said, if you're living fast, I said that this is what the way life's going to be if you're living fast. And when you're living fast, you don't have time for what just passed. You're ready to move on. That's what living fast is. Living fast isn't, you know, these guys that go to the top of these skyscrapers and jump off or, or uh, you know, Dan Blazarian type. They, you might call that living fast, which it is, but that's on a physical level. That's a, that's a physical fast. I'm talking about live a spiritual fast. Meaning, go through the emotional high, experience it fully, go with the low, experience it fully, but go right back up when the high is going to be present again. And the high could be present in the next moment. You could sustain a blow at your height 
I'm having a great day, and the one girl who you're having a great time with, all of a sudden, big boyfriend and her friends show up, and you're there with you and your wingman. <laughs> right? You were on a high, man, this is great, to, whoa, this is about to be low. <laughs> and get up as soon as that low is done, and get high again. That's living fast. So if the girl says no, they feel it, feel low. You should feel low, because you didn't win this time. Right? You want to be guilty and feel shameful? Good. Now, get over it. Go to the next one. Wow. OK. Makes total sense. Uh, so we're, we're, we're going to wrap up now. Yes. Yeah, we're going to wrap So one is, for those that are listening, uh, what? Out of everything that you experienced in life, out of everything you've gone through, the ups and downs, if you can take everything and give it as one message in one or two sentences, so they can read that every day or listen to that every day and keep that in their heart all the time and in their soul, what would that message be? To be the strongest version of yourself and empower others. That's too good. <laughs> That's good. You got it, big man. I appreciate you. Best, 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 best. Thank you, guys.